Hi guys, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for your support. If you um, haven't already, or if you're new, please consider subscribing. Um, I usually upload new content twice or three times a week. And uh, if you like this kind of content, um, audio file reissues, audio file topics, please uh, consider subscribing. Just hit subscribe and notification. You'll be helping out the channel and you'll get notified whenever uh, the new video comes up. So um, I just want to talk briefly about the two recent um, acoustic sound series uh, impulse releases, C Crescent and uh, Coltrane at the Village Vanguard. I touched on them briefly um, in another video, just kind of an introductory um, uh, mention of them. Uh, Mingus is also here because I haven't really covered that as well. The last one I did was um, um, Black Saint and the Sitter Lady. Uh, there's a full video on that, which is pretty interesting. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. Um, but kind of what I wanted to talk about with this is Coltrane. Um, my Coltrane um, collection now consists of a nondescript copy of Blue Train. I don't know where it's from. It might be Blue Note 75, I guess. Um, also, uh, Love Supreme, I did get. Ballads, I got from this series. And these two, uh, Coltrane Live at the Village Vanguard and Crescent. And um, all have been superb pressings, very beautiful presentations, very desirable um, if you like Coltrane. And... This is where I kind of have a little bit of an issue because I'm having trouble getting into Coltrane. I don't know what it is. I know he's extremely like well thought of, well respected, um, a master of his um, instrument, um, an innovator. I just, for some reason, I just cannot penetrate his records or they're not reaching into me and I cannot figure out why. I mean, everyone loves Coltrane. I mean, it seems like everyone loves Coltrane. I mean, maybe it's just because I'm coming to this. Uh, sorry for the noise. Um, it's cold here today. It's like 50, 50 degrees in Miami, which is kind of cold for us. So I have my little space heater on. Um, it's just like, uh, I know I'm supposed to like him and his rec and these records, but for some reason, I'm not get they're not getting a lot of play. Um, I respect them. I can appreciate them. I can appreciate the artistry. Uh, the records themselves are flawless, but um, for some reason, it's just not my cup of tea. Uh, and I guess that's okay. I just have to uh, keep plugging away um, with repeat plays, and that does. That does happen with, with, with quality uh, records that have um, a little bit more depth to them. Um, th sometimes it takes years to come around to a record, you know? Um, I remember in the rock realm, um, uh, Forever Changes, you know, I've had it for a long time and it took me a while, a couple of years really, before I really came around to it and, and, and appreciated it for what it is. And now I, I absolutely love it. So I'm, I'm thinking the th same thing is going to happen with Coltrane. Um, but in the meantime, I have plenty of other jazz releases that I love and, and, and I'm exploring. So I'm not too worried about it. But um, both uh, records are beautifully done. Um, I touched on this previously in one video. Um, these are superb. There's no question about it. I, I, I liked the live one um, a lot. Um, the second side was a little, little deep for me. Uh, Crescent uh, sounded fantastic right out of the gate and is a little bit more accessible in some ways. Um, but yeah, so those two are, are currently shipping. Um, Mingus, 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 I never did uh, a full review on and I probably won't, but I wanted to mention it. Um, 
you know, I did Black Saint and the Sinner Lady. Um, and that's another example. Like when I first put it on, I was like, I don't get this. And if you go back to my review um, for that one, Black Saint and the Sinner Lady, you'll see how I, I came around to uh, really appreciating it, appreciating it, appreciating it, appreciating it and loving it. Um, this one was much, much easier to get into. And that's, that's definitely a winner. I love that one too. The whole series is, is fantastic. Um, you know, but if you're, if you're new and you're just exploring jazz, you're not, it's not going to be like every title is going to resonate with you. So, you know, I'm happy to get them and kind of like go along and see, um, if they will click with me at some point. Um, because I don't want to miss out on these titles. I know they're uh, important titles in the Impulse catalog, and I really would like to build a great jazz collection, and Coltrane is absolutely got to be a part of it. So um, I do get them, and, uh, you know, I'm, sh I'm sure most people, when they buy records, they already know they love the record and want to get it. For me, you know, especially with the channel and, and you know, my exploration of jazz, I'm buying things kind of, you know, just on trust that I'm going to like it. And sometimes it happens right away. Sometimes it happens later, but that's okay. Um, so I just wanted to mention um, those two are still available um, through the usual outlets. I'm going to leave links below um, for Amazon um, and Acoustic Sounds. Um, also, uh, I noticed on Amazon Trio 65 is on sale. It's like $25 um, to pre-order it. So that's, that's a good deal. The two Mingus titles are out of stock. Um, Ella's Swinging Christmas is available prob also for like $25, which is great. Uh, the Ray Charles, um, is available as well. Sonny Rollins. Um, most of the other ones are out of print or out of stock, not out of print. Hopefully they'll come back around. Um, and upcoming for pre-orders is the Duke Ellington and John Coltrane record, which I have pre-ordered and John Coltrane and, and Johnny Hartman as well. So it, yeah, if you're, if you're looking to get those, uh, there'll be links in the description box below. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about Coltrane. I mean, I, you know, I feel kind of embarrassed in a way that I am not getting Coltrane, but, you know, I know it's okay. And other people have written to me um, and commented in my videos that say that, you know, they understand that and they went through the same thing. So I guess I'm not the only one, but uh, sometimes it feels like you're the only one who's not getting it. And uh, uh, hopefully that changes. So. Um, if you have any comments on uh, the new releases um, or you want to comment on Coltrane, please feel free to in the comments section below. Until next time, this is Scott for the Pressing Matters. Um, I wish you a great day. See you next time.